Hi guys! Previously in episode number 6 I've covered traits from and into which allows us to build more flexible and reusable APIs. When we are able to make our functions receive different types of input, we still have one limitation. We cannot vary behavior of these functions depending on an input type. Very rare, but sometimes it could be just exactly what we want. So in this video I want to show you how you can achieve something very similar to method overloading in Rust with help of generic traits. So here's a little minimalistic example of what I want to achieve. We have some kind of struct named detector and it has method detect that accepts some value, in this case it's integer, and when it when we pass integer, it must print whatever is i32. And it must also be able to accept string. And we pass string, it must print whatever is a string. What is important here, we want to have two different implementations for these two methods. Also, if you know at least a little bit of Rust, you may think that this is not possible because you cannot pass different types to the same function in Rust, so there's no method overloading. When it's true, but there's still some kind of workarounds for this, so we can achieve this. Uh, let's assume we have empty struct named detector, and uh, what we need to do is to implement generic trait, generic over type t, and to pass this generic type to our detect function. So uh, having this, having this generic trait, it means that uh, for Rust, these two concrete traits uh, are will be different. So Rust will treat them as different traits. Detect i32 and detect static string are different traits. And uh, having that, it allows us to implement, basically to have two different implementations, because these two are just different traits. So this means that we may have one implementation for detect i32 and another implementation for detect static string. And these two blocks, these two implementations can be just completely different, whatever we want. So just really different methods. And here's a complete example how it may look like. So if we run it, It works as we expected. And one thing to keep in mind is that uh, when we call detect here, it's necessary for detect trait to be in the scope. Otherwise, this method will not be found. Also, actually, it looks like we have two. It looks like we have method overloading here. What? happens in reality, Rust just uh, dispatches these two calls to different implementations. So Rust is kind of smart enough to understand that if we pass type integer, then we mean to call detect method on for this detect i32 trait. There's also universal function syntax Universal, universal function call syntax, call function syntax, and uh, if we use it, it would be something like this. Let me run it. Yeah. So, uh, in this way, we say that we want to use detector, but having all 
features of detect i32 trait, calling this detect method. And now you see that actually these two are uh, different things. So that's how Rust see our code, even if it looks like this. Now you won't ask probably why we need this, and uh, I guess there are some use cases when you want to implement some nice library that just will be more easy for users to use. In most cases, probably inter and from traits must be enough. In my personal experience, I had only one case when I really <laughs> wanted something like this and I came up to this solution. It's a, it's a, a TA library, it's library for technical analysis that has some set of uh, technical analysis indicators. And uh, some indicators just must have different behavior depending on what type of data they consume. All indicators work may consume just uh, row numbers like F64, like float, but sometimes it's just more meaningful to do another more precise calculation when some other more complicated data item is passed, like here. So here I have implementation of next trait that returns F64 float and this one is implementation for input float and another one, this one implementation is just for more complicated data structure that has high, low and close methods that are used here. So that's it for today and uh, I hope you like it. Give me feedback and uh, let me know what you want to see next time. Bye.